This is O'Reilly Media. We're at Oracle's Open World, and we're talking to Monik Sertani. He works with Red Hat, and he's based in London. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure thing. I started working with JBoss, actually, prior to Red Hat acquiring JBoss, and I've been building clustering, um, the entire clustering infrastructure for the JBoss application server. Uh, ever since JBoss got acquired by Red Hat, I've been doing a few other things, including running um, a distributed cache project, and most recently, Infinispan, which is a, a distributed data grid. Okay, so talk a little bit about Infinispan, because I, sure. I read distributed data grid, and that sounds interesting, but talk a little bit about some of the applications that it's used for. Okay, people use data grids for a bunch of things. Usually it is to kind of cache stuff as a distributed cache, but this is kind of old school usage. I'll talk a little bit about this first, um, and about where it's going in future as well, which is actually more interesting. Um, People used to use distributed caches to essentially cache stuff that's either hard to retrieve, expensive to calculate, stuff like that. Typically things that come from a database. When you have to hit a relational database and that's an expensive thing to do, um, especially if your application has got a high, high throughput, a large number of transactions per second and so on and so forth. Um, and if your application is clustered as well, so you're, you can't just use a single static cache, that's not good enough. Your cache has got to be distributed as well. It's got to be coherent so that you know things change and so on and so forth. So that's what distributed caches have been used for, um, essentially as a performance boost to try and remove the bottleneck that is the database. Um, in terms of applications and industries, uh, very, very popular in the financial services industry. A lot of um, these financial services guys who are building risk engines and things like that, um, they, they can't afford the latency that a database gives you. Uh, similarly, lots of telcos and um, other industries where you have um, a large number of transactions and you're reliant on very, very fast responses. So in terms of latency, what are we talking about? I want to put it in perspective. Are we talking about seconds, milliseconds, microseconds? Well, let's put it this way. Um, that was a very, very good slide I once had in one of my presentations. I'll try and verbalize it, if you will. You hit. St I mean, you've got different forms of storage in a computer. You've got, you've got um, the caches that sit on your CPU. Um, and then an order of magnitude slower than that are your second level caches on your CPU. An order of magnitude slower than that is main memory. And a couple of orders of magnitude higher than that is disk. Now databases sit on disk. So you're talking about many orders of magnitude away. So it is um, that much slower. I mean, typically three orders of magnitude slower. I asked the question about latency because I've recently seen into a company that needs to participate in double click auctions. Mm -hmm. So a user goes to a site that site needs to show an ad impression, and DoubleClick sends out essentially a question to a number of ad providers, and that response has to happen within a couple of milliseconds, or you don't get to show the user an ad. And mm -hmm. they needed something that was in memory, a massive data grid to store terabytes, possibly much more than terabytes, in memory. Mm -hmm. Are these, these are the sorts of things that I would imagine you would use the InfinisBan Project 4, is that, is that Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes, that's very typical. Something like you said, where you have to store a large volume of data, um, where you need to have very, very fast responses, and more than that, the one thing, the, the, the additional thing that, that you mentioned uh, in this setup um, is, is the fact that this is, this is um, a, a system that has a lot of traffic and cannot go down. You have to have high availability. Computers are machines, and machines fail. If your database goes down, you can't just stop serving ads in this example. You have to keep going, which means your, your system has got to be distributed. You've got to be resilient to machines dying. You've got to be um, resilient to failure, and so on and so forth. So stock exchanges, mm -hmm. ad networks, yes. probably intelligence agencies. Absolutely, things, yes. Uh, the, these are all huge applications that, that throw around petabytes of data. Yes. And essentially, it's cheaper mm -hmm. to just buy a bunch of machines with a lot of memory and store everything oh, in, yeah. in um, Absolutely. RAM. I mean, when your application is, when it's that critical to your application, yes, you do, you do that. You just buy, like you said, lots of machines with lots of memory, and that does work out cheaper than trying to buy a big iron box that may never go down. That still might, but, you know. Okay, so let's say I'm not an intelligence agency, I'm mm -hmm. not a stock exchange, yeah. and I'm not an ad network. Mm -hmm. It, talk about some of the applications for smaller apps, or are well, there there's different ones? Well, I mean, yes, there certainly are. Um, a very uh, one of one of our, well, one of the applications I know that went live on a very early version of Infinispan um, was a real estate company. Quite simple; does not sound too complicated, but they have the accolade of being the largest real estate company in Australia. 
um, and pretty much all real estate traffic goes through their website. And again, they've had the same need for high availability, for really, really fast lookups and things like that. And they've used InfiniSpan very successfully from very early on. Um, in addition to that, I've also seen some rather interesting esoteric usage as well. In cases, uh, for example, there is a company that does video streaming online, 3D video streaming. And they use InfiniSpan for, uh, to, to handle DRM and things like that. And again, very interesting stuff. So are they using the inf uh, are they using InfiniSpan as an alternative to a database? Yes, yes, absolutely. In that case, does it fit into this extremely ill-defined term NoSQL? Well, this is it. So, I mean, when I mentioned earlier that, that um, your primary usage of, of data grids would be as a distributed cache to sit in front of a database, I said that was a, a slightly outdated form of what people do with it, and this is changing fast. Data grids are now fast becoming more like NoSQL, where they become a primary data store, where they completely replace the database. And to me, that's much more interesting. That's much more interesting because um, you're actually making, you're not, you're not just using a data grid as a pacemaker to a database, or something to speed up a database, or to try and remove the problems you might have with the database. You're removing the database altogether now and saying, you know what, I've actually solved that problem. I'm now moving on to the next level. So that is much more interesting to me. So JBoss historically was using caches to increase database performance. I remember this project's like EH Cache, which does this. There's a, yes. There, there was a tree cache implementation. Uh, JBoss Cache. J -Boss that, that was cache. a project I used to lead um, at JBoss back in the day. So InfiniSpan is really the... It's an evolution of that, yes. Um, historically, the way the way I came up, or you know, the, the the impetus to come up with a data grid to build InfiniSpan was that people were using JBoss Cache as a data grid, and it was not designed to do that. And they'd come back with problems, and you know, we got these issues and those issues. Why are you doing that? You're not meant to do that with JBoss Cache. JBoss Cache is meant to be a cache, a simple cache. But that's kind of where the penny drops, saying there is a need for a data grid. People clearly want it, and they're using whatever they have, even though whatever they have is inappropriate. And the difference between using something like JBoss Cache, mm -hmm. EH Cache as a simple cache, and what is provided by InfiniSpan is what? What is the differentiation? The differentiator really is proper scalability. I mean, I can't speak very much about EH Cache. That's not a Red Hat JBoss project. I don't have that much insight into it. But JBoss Cache, for example, um, would only, was only designed to scale up to 10 nodes, for example, not beyond that while InfiniSpan uh, from ground up has been designed with true scalability in mind. So um, what does that mean from a technical perspective? Like what, what, mm -hmm. what does it mean to get up to a, a level of concurrency that can support something like 1,000, 10,000 nodes? It's an implementation detail as to how we actually store data in memory, how we actually store data, how we actually locate data, and how we route requests. And this stuff is very, very core to InfiniSpan. So, yeah. so you mentioned that uh, Chicago Board of Exchange uses InfiniSpan? Yes, the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. Um, they've got the accolade of being the, the, the financial organization that effectively invented options trading um, decades ago, I'm guessing, I'm not quite sure when. And they actually rolled again with a relatively early version of InfiniSpan and went live with it, put it in production. It handles a lot of their trades and things. It is um, very, very impressive. And they've actually been very good open source uh, citizens as well in that they'd helped um, test stuff, they've contributed fixes, they've contributed features, and they still continue to do so to this day. Yeah, I'm actually from Chicago. There's a lot of okay. really fascinating things happening yeah. at that particular organization. Yeah. So I'd like to thank you for joining us, and if you want to learn more about InfiniSpan, this is my last question, mm -hmm. where do we go and how do we get started? So InfiniSpan's website's going to be your starting point, infinispan.org. Um, it's got it's got links to, to, to quick starts, to, to bootstraps, to lots of articles, lots of literature. Um, you, can download, you can download samples, demos, so on and so forth. And that would probably be the best way to, to do so. There are also link, lots of links to, to online slide presentations and videos and stuff, which will get people started. Great. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.